Our immune systems are meant to be there to protect us from foreign um, entities, whether it's bacteria or viruses, etc. But sometimes the immune system gets it wrong, and that recognizes parts of your joints, for example, as foreign rather than being your own, and the immune system results in inflammation in those areas. Hello, my name is Dr. Ziad Farah. I'm a consultant rheumatologist and general internal physician. Today I'm going to talk to you about inflammatory arthritis. So what is inflammatory arthritis? Well, it's sort of what the name suggests. It's inflammation affecting the joints. There are many reasons to get an inflammatory arthritis, but today I'm going to focus mostly on the autoimmune causes of joint inflammation. Now, what do I mean by autoimmune causes? And this is, it's where the immune system results in inflammation in the joints. So what's driving the inflammation is your own immune system. Our immune systems are meant to be there to protect us from foreign um, entities, whether it's bacteria or viruses, etc. But sometimes the immune system gets it wrong and that recognizes parts of your joints, for example, as foreign rather than being your own, and the immune system results in inflammation in those areas. So what are the examples of inflammatory arthritis? The three most important ones to think about are rheumatoid arthritis, which is by far the most common, psoriatic arthritis, and that's inflammatory arthritis in patients who have psoriasis, the skin condition that causes scaly skin, for example. And then there are the spondyloarthritis um, causes, and these are the patients who have inflammation in the back, but also inflammation in the peripheral joints, in the hands, and the knees, etc. Now, inflammatory arthritis in general presents in very similar ways. The key presentation is pain in the joints, stiffness, and the characteristic feature is the stiffness tends to be in the morning. Inactivity makes the stiffness worse. So usually patients complain that they have stiffness lasting from 30 to 60 minutes at least in the morning. And it takes a while before they're able to get going. And exercise tends to improve the symptoms and the stiffness. And the third common symptom is swelling. And that's particularly common in rheumatoid arthritis, which affects the small joints of the hands. How is inflammatory arthritis diagnosed? Well, the history is very important. Like I mentioned, the characteristic inflammatory features of early morning stiffness, redness, swelling, those are very important features to suggest an inflammatory process. The number of joints that are affected also can help arrive at the diagnosis. Having associated conditions and symptoms, like I mentioned psoriasis in the skin, or patients with inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis can present with inflammation in their joints. So the history provides lots of information to help arrive at the diagnosis. To support that, the clinical examination is really key. Often I would feel the joints for whether there is swelling, puffiness, fluid, heat. And then I would often request a set of blood tests. Blood tests would include things like your inflammation markers, some antibodies, which are markers of your immune system that signal that your immune system is misbehaving and causing the inflammation inappropriately. And then imaging, really important. Ultrasound is really helpful because with a scanner, we could see if there's inflammation in the joint. An MRI scanner is also quite helpful because again, it shows if there's inflammation or fluid in the affected area. Pulling all this information together helps arrive at the diagnosis. And I like to mention here that it's important to recognize just having a blood test or just having a, an imaging finding does not give the diagnosis. The importance of my role is to pull all this together and to build the picture. So how do we treat inflammatory arthritis? Well, to treat it, we have to think about the cause. And here, the cause is the immune system. The immune system is misbehaving and driving the inflammation. In the acute setting, when there's significant pain and swelling, often a short course of steroid is really helpful. And that tends to reduce the inflammation acutely. It's important not to remain on steroids for a long time because steroids have long-term side effects. So to prevent the disease from continuing, we, I usually, usually prescribe patients with steroid-sparing agents. These are drugs that target the immune system to be taken on a long period of time to reduce and control the immune system and stop the inflammation. Once patients are on these treatments, it's important to review things regularly. After a period of stability, I tend to reduce the dose of the drug gradually over time. But it's important to remember that we have lots of different treatments available. The key thing is to present early so we can get a quick diagnosis and get onto treatment as soon as possible.